will it be so again that the brave, the gifted, are lost from view, and empty, scheming men are left in peace, their lunatic age to renew? Will it be so again? Must it be always so that the best are chosen to fall in sleep like seeds, and we too slow in claiming the earth they quicken, and the old usurpers reap what they could not sow? Will it be so again? The jungle code and the hypocrite gesture, a poppy wreath for the slain and a cutthroat world for the living, that stale imposture played on us once again? Will it be as before? Peace, with no heart or mind to ensure it, guttering down to war like a libertine to his grave. We should not be surprised. We knew it happened before. Shall it be so again? Call not upon the glorious dead to be your witness then. The living alone can nail to their promise the ones who said it shall not be so again. Right, so we have our anti-war poem. And the message of the poem is very much driven by the rhetorical question, will it be so again? And this rhetorical question ends with the word again, which emphasizes that um, relentless cycle of war and shows that poet's frustration at this unnecessary loss of life and sacrifice by soldiers. The speaker suggests throughout this poem that the empty scheming men, in other words, the uh, politicians, are the only ones who benefit from war because it suits their political agenda. They are the old usurpers. Okay, old tells us that they're not the ones who are actually fighting. We send the brave, we send the young off to fight. And usurpers, it implies that they've stolen power that doesn't actually belong to them. So the continual sacrifice by the soldiers furthers the livelihood of the politicians in a cutthroat world. And that is a word with such strong connotations of pain and violence. Now, the world that the soldiers are fighting for and dying for is wasted on the living, according to the poet, because the living are not striving to secure peace. And the poem suggests that when we have had war, we need to cultivate and harvest seeds of peace, good seeds. But instead, what ends up happening is we're not quick enough and we're not uh, resolved to actually secure peace. So the old usurpers are able to uh, reap the war, you know, and um, continue with an agenda that we allow them to pursue. So this poem is asking the reader to take action to secure peace. Now, we've got some hard truths presented by the speaker. Let's take a look at some of the ideas. Okay, uh, in the first stanza, we have the stereotypical idea of the soldiers being brave and gifted versus the empty scheming men, the politicians. And ironically, we are leaving the empty scheming men in peace so that they can create more war. Now, leaving them in peace to create war is a terrible disservice to the soldiers who go off and sacrifice their lives. And it just makes no sense. And... Um, in the first stanza, we see lunatic age, the suggestion that, of course, war and the cycle of war is just madness. And then we go to the second stanza and we have this sense of frustration coming through where we say, you know, must it always be so that the best are chosen to fall in sleep? Now, of course, that's a euphemism. Um, it's saying something harsh in a softer way instead of they die, you know, you're saying they fall and sleep. But that 
Softness ironically emphasizes the harshness of the death because we know that a soldier's death in war is um, very brutal and the complete opposite of the peace one associates with sleep. So what we see is that from the death of the soldier, we could use that and their sacrifice to now bring about peace. But unfortunately, we are too slow, the ordinary citizens. And then the politicians, the old usurpers, are able to come in and they are able to claim the earth for their own purposes and create more war. And then we go to the third stanza where it says, will it be so again, the jungle code. And the jungle code is like a barbaric, um, violent and um, chaotic uh, world. And hypocrite gesture of the poppy wreath refers to the politicians who pretend to honor those who've died in war but show no real respect for the sacrifice because they don't take steps to secure peace. So the sacrifice is therefore uh, futile. And we've got that cutthroat world, painful, violent world for the living. The stale imposture. Now, if something is stale, you think of bread, it, it, you want to throw it out, you're tired of it, it's no longer palatable. But the imposture is the lies that the politicians have been telling us. And the speaker's saying that those lies are now old. It's they, they need to be thrown out. We mustn't listen to those lies anymore. And then we continue with the idea again. Look at that repetition. Will it be as before? Peace. So we, we secure peace, but then it doesn't last because those in charge have no heart or mind to ensure it. So we end up guttering down to war. Now, if you think of a gutter, a lot of waste uh, in terms of liquids goes into a gutter, runs off into a gutter, ultimately ends up in a drain somewhere. So the idea is that if we're guttering down to war, we're wasting lives um, in pursuit of war. And like a libertine to his grave, um, a libertine is someone with no moral values. And the idea is that yeah, a libertine eventually self-destructs, destroys uh, himself. And, and that's what we are doing by pursuing war. And um, he's, he's reminding us this has happened before. And then he goes into that final stanza and he says, you know, um, shall it be so again? will call not upon the glorious dead to be your witness then. And of course, why can't we call upon the glorious dead? Well, it's obvious they sacrificed their lives, soldiers, um, thinking that they were going to secure peace for their country, but they're now dead. So they're not going to be here to hear your promise that there will not be a war again. The people who need to secure uh, peace would be you, and me, ordinary citizens who are resolved to bringing about peace. Instead of fighting for peace, we should be living for peace. Fighting for peace is actually a paradox. It's a contradiction in more than two words, and it doesn't always appear to make sense at first, but on close examination, it does. Sometimes we do have to fight for peace. But there's an alternative idea that comes through here is that, you know, we should stop fighting for peace, live for peace so that we don't have to fight for peace. So the dead cannot ensure lasting peace. Only the living can do that. And the speaker suggests that that is our responsibility and we have to take that very seriously. Now, besides the um, rhetorical question um, or questions that appear throughout the poem, 
we do have the idea of con contrasts with the brave and the gifted those are the soldiers who die and the empty and the scheming and that would be the uh, politicians in terms of the structure of this poem it's obviously framed by the rhetorical questions in every stanza it drives the frustration of the speaker at the fact that we do such a disservice to those who sacrifice their lives by perpetuating the cycle of war uh, we also have a very hard uh, forced rhythm and half rhyme in parts but the structure the words the poem itself very hard um, there's very little softness unless it's used in an ironic way for instance when we talk about soldiers uh, chosen to fall and sleep there's bitterness and irony coming through because their deaths are so brutal and there's nothing soft about it so the harsh uh, tone very much drives the central message of this poem where we are faced with the harsh reality of war and we are asked to work harder to secure peace.